So I've been shooting HDR since, I don't know, 2008 or 2009. And I know the cool kids moved on to other techniques long ago, and HDR is uh, uncool or whatever the term is. But I got to admit, there are a few things in photography that I enjoy more than gunning brackets into a stunning sunset, building that in, into an HDR, and uh, crafting that image to look the way I want that image to look. It's, it's very satisfying to me. I just enjoy that process so much. That's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Uh, and the truth is, HDR has changed. And, and if you'd like uh, to learn more about kind of my thoughts on that, I may do a video, uh, you know, in the future about that because it's definitely changed, but people are still doing HDR all the time. But in this video, I'm going to take three different photos from Iceland. There's this one, which is the dark one. That's a negative four. This one, which is a negative two. And this one, which is a zero. Uh, those are the exposure values. I stick them together here in Luminar Neo in the HDR Merge extension and it end up with a base HDR. Let me combine these and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so after the merge is done, I ended up with this photo. And that's one of the things I like so much about HDR is of course, the entire point of it is to get a fairly even distribution of light. Now, when I go in and do an edit to an HDR photo, I don't really maintain that same distribution of light. I like to craft it and create mood and drama and just kind of some emotion in the photo. But it's a great starting point and it really allows you to work the scene quite well. That's my base photo. Now, I did go and do erase and develop and super contrast. And after those adjustments, I've now got this. Pretty simple and straightforward stuff in develop and super contrast. So I'm just going to leave them out of this video. But you can see it made a little bit of an impact before and after, including the erase. Had to take care of some spots and other distracting elements. But what I want to do now is kind of go in and do additional global edits. When I'm editing a photo, I'm starting out global, which is if it's a single raw file, it'd be develop raw and then super contrast the majority of the time. In this case, there were three raw files that were uh, taken and built into an HDR, but that HDR merged file is a TIFF. So it wasn't develop raw, it was develop. But regardless, my first tool is develop and my second tool is super contrast like normal and continuing with the theme of global adjustments. And that is make adjustments across the entire photo. And then I go in and do targeted stuff. And then I tend to do more global adjustments at the end. That's kind of my standard editing workflow. But in this case, uh, a global adjustment is going to be a golden hour. And that's at about 34, just giving some uh, nice pop to those warmer tones. And speaking of tones, I'm going to go into toning and in highlights, I'm going to do about a 22 and that's leaving the hue at zero, which is red. And so basically what I'm doing is those two adjustments together really pop in that sunset, that warm orange glow that's over there on that left hand side and adding a little bit of kind of red to it here with toning. That's just getting me kind of going in the right direction color wise. And again, these are global adjustments affecting the entire photo. So I do them early on. And now what I want to do is get into HSL, which is in the color tool. And HSL is really powerful. As the name implies, it's hue, saturation, and luminance for all these eight different color channels. And so this is not a, uh, I'm not masking. So it's still a global adjustment, meaning I'm not masking it anywhere. But because I'm targeting specific colors, it is kind of a local adjustment. So you can define it however you like. Um, but uh, here in hue, I'm going to take the yellows and I'm going to go to about a high 30s, like 39. And all that's doing is getting some of those yellow colors kind of more toward the green, especially uh, the, the grasses here. Uh, in saturation, I'm going to go drop down to that. And for saturation, I'm going to take the yellows to a negative 48. And so that's actually going to drag um, a lot of that uh, saturated color out of the the grass is in the foreground and I'm actually going to take the greens down as well to about an 18 and then I go into luminance and here I'm just going to take both yellow and green down about a negative 10 and that's darkening them and so if you take a look at the before and after with color there it is before and there it is after it's really not impacting the sky even though I used yellow that's more orange and red that's in the sky so I got away with that not having to worry about masking it. Uh, but you might want to keep that in mind. If you have a lot of yellow in your sky, just be careful with that and you may need to mask that in, uh, in your own photo. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to develop. And usually this is where I start masking, but actually I'm not. I'm actually going to go right here to the whites and I'm going to bump that up about a 20 or so. And all that's doing is, of course, uh, brightening those whites. And one of the key things here, of course, this is a gorgeous waterfall called Sell Yellen's Fa, I don't know, I cannot say Icelandic words, but anyway, it's gorgeous. You walk behind it, 
It's, it's amazing. We had this stunning sunset. Everybody was super happy. This was on the Luminar photo camp uh, back in August. But uh, with the whites, I want to bring up the look of the waterfall, uh, but also brighten the sky a little bit. And one of the things I'm doing here is building that contrast, kind of that tension, if you will, between the darker inside of the cave, which you would expect to be darker, and the brighter, a bit more colorful outside the cave. Uh, and part of the way to do that is for me to bring up the whites. And that's going to impact the sky, as you can see, before and after, but it's also impacting the waterfall. Now that I've done with that, I'm actually going to open develop again. And this is where I'm going to go in and get a brush mask. And I'm going to drop the opacity to, let's say, 63. And I'm going to come in and just do a little brushing here in the water. And this is going to further accentuate some of that waterfall. And I'm going to get a little bit of this over here as well. Uh, I recommend you take your time. I was doing that very uh, rapidly, which by definition means I wasn't super accurate. So I I admit that in videos, I don't take a lot of time to do uh, the slow, precise work that I do recommend that you do. But all I'm doing here is lifting the exposure where I just created that mask. And so again, drawing attention to the water. So before and after where it's slightly brighter. So that was that move. So this is where I'm getting into local adjustments. I did a bunch of stuff at the beginning, which were global, impacting the entire photo. And now I'm starting to get into some local adjustments. And I will admit in my own workflow, sometimes I bounce back and forth between global and local. I generally do some of both on every single photo, but I don't always go exactly all my globals and then I'm done. And then all my locals and then I'm done. And then touch up global at the end and then I'm done. There's, I'm fluid. Uh, the process is always fluid. So uh, anyway, we've got a better looking waterfall there. So I'm going to go ahead and close develop. And now I want to get into structure AI. And what I'm going to do here is get a mask. And once again, that's a brush. And I'm going to get a pretty big brush. And all I'm going to do is kind of hit the sides over here. Uh, something about like that. Again, take your time in your own photos. Uh, and maybe use a smaller brush and get a little bit more accuracy. But the truth is, in this photo, I don't really have to be incredibly accurate. I'm just giving this a slight bump in uh, structure. And so that's just going to give it a little bit of crunch because it's rock and grass. So it feels to me like it should be a little bit crunchy. Uh, but it also brightens it just a slight bit. So before and after. And I like that, so I'm going to close that, but I'm going to use Structure AI again, once again with a mask and a brush, and a large one because I'm just going to cover the sky this time. So I'm kind of doing the opposite of what I just did. In this case, I'm coming in and I'm going to remove structure from the sky. So let's pretend I did a good job masking. And you don't have to be perfect around those edges. Just you know, get it pretty close, uh, but use a soft brush because that'll allow you to fade that effect into the rest of the photo instead of having a really hard edge. When you're doing something like negative structure, and I'm only going 19, so it's not super soft, um, you probably wouldn't see that even with a hard edge. But nonetheless, it's a good practice, a good best practice, really, to use a soft edge brush pretty much for everything, to be honest. So I'm going to close that. And one of the key things, of course, here is beautiful sunset, beautiful waterfall, and that whole thing. I mean, my eye goes straight to the waterfall, and then I look out over the sunset. And a great way to accentuate those things is Accent AI. And I like Accent AI a lot. Uh, but I like to use it with a mask. So I'm going to mask it in. What I don't want to do is add a bunch of Accent AI to the areas inside the cave because it will just brighten them. And then um, that kind of throws off a little bit of what I'm doing with the light. So I am just masking that. And then with Accent AI, I'm going to come in and I'm going to give that, whoops, uh, like a 25, 26, 27. How about that? So if you look at before and after, before... And after, just gives it a nice little pop. Accent AI is so good at that. And that's what I love the tool, uh, or what I love about the tool so much. Pops a little bit of color, a little contrast, light values. It's just like a one slider to rule them all. But it doesn't really rule them all because it's, it's something that I use uh, sparingly, meaning not a large amount in terms of the how far I move the slider, but also sparingly in terms of I tend to prefer 90-something percent of the time to mask it in to just certain parts of the photo. And those are the photo, uh, the parts of the photo that I want to pop. The sky, the waterfall, a little bit of that pond area where the water's hitting, but I don't want to brighten up the cave. So now that I've done that, I'm going to do a little bit more on color because there's a lot of color here, and I love it, um, and, and I like color. Uh, and so I'm going to give a little bit of bump here to brilliance and warmth. Uh, brilliance is like vibrance. It's going to make the colors pop. Warmth, of course, is going to make them hotter warmer, I guess is a better description. Uh, and I'm also going to go into warmth and cool on split color warmth. 
and this is going to be like a five or six there and like a negative seven or eight here when you drag the warm slider on split color warmth to the right uh, the warm colors get warmer and if you drag the cool slider to the left here the cool colors get cooler so i talked about tension earlier between the darker and less saturated inner cave and the brighter more vibrant outer area which is the sky but i also have some tension here between the colors the warm colors of that sunset and the fading light of the day and then the cool colors of the sky and some of the clouds as night is kind of approaching uh, so i like to look at things kind of that way so i create a little bit of color tension by playing these colors off of each other before and after and a little bit more i'm going to do here is in highlights for color balance i'm going to do like a one and like a negative two or negative three all that's doing is in the highlights creating a little bit more warmth and i can see it's throwing off a little bit of the color here i'll fix that in a second uh, and in shadows i'm actually going to come in and i'm going to do about a three and all that's going to do is just take the shadows uh, and make them a little bit cooler uh, so a little bit bluer which also makes them a little bit darker and now that i've uh, identified that little section there and these are the little things you got to pay attention to which i miss sometimes in videos honestly because i'm trying to look at the whole photo and i can't slow down and look at every single thing because you'd be bored to death um, but i'm going to come in with erase and i'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit and i'm just going to erase some of this from there let's say something like that that that's got most of it maybe i could use a little bit more but you get the point pay attention to the finer small details which i don't always do in videos just because i'm sitting here making a video trying not to waste your time and trying to impart as many little tips and tricks as i can but bottom line color uh, harmony took me from that to that so a bit more pop in the sky which is really where i want the colors to pop i think that looks good now of course that was a, a global adjustment because it affected the colors across the entire image even though color balance separates the tonal values highlights midtones and shadows and adjusts those separately brilliance and warmth and split color warmth those are uh, more global in nature so that that's kind of an in-between tool but what i want to do with uh, next is use develop and this is something i like to do kind of toward the end of my edit and that is come back with develop one more time and just kind of hit some of the high points which for me is usually contrast so i might go two or three on contrast and i'm going to pull the highlights down just a little bit so maybe like a negative 10 and maybe like a negative seven or eight on shadows uh, maybe a nine something like that this is all just balancing the light so before and after it's pretty minor to be honest and then in blacks and whites i'm going to do a, a minus one or two uh, on blacks going to darken that shadow area a little bit but i'm going to do like about a positive uh, 10 or 11 on whites so again that's going to pop the waterfall and and some of the sky so global adjustment toward the end of my edit with develop something i'd like to do a lot before and after just gives it a little bit more pop a little bit more kick uh, and i like that another global edit i want to do here is mystical and i'm just going to hit that at about a 30 or 32 something about like that and maybe lift the shadows a little bit i don't want to go too high like that because i don't want a whole lot of visibility into the cave i don't really care um, I, for anyone to really spend too much time looking at the cave uh, but it, you know it can maybe use a little bit of adjustment but before and after You'll also notice that mystical does a nice bit of contrast there with the waterfall and the light and so the bright stuff gets a little bit brighter the dark stuff gets a little bit darker which is why that shadows uh, slider is there I'm, I'm guessing slight bit of contrast adjustment so before and after and that's creating a bit of mood and kind of excitement uh at least in me uh in terms of the uh the photo one thing i want to do though is come over here and this is something i just kind of noticed and that is it's a little too orange so i think i'm just going to get a brush mask and this will be a local adjustment like i said sometimes i bounce back and forth i was just doing develop globally kind of at the end of my edit but as i see things that need to be addressed i definitely want to address them and so i'm going to come over here and mask that in and take that color saturation and vibrance down a little bit maybe something like that it was a little too orange and so i don't want that to be distracting to the eye of the viewer so before and after i think that's a little bit better and then i actually think that i'll come in with develop and actually get a mask and i actually think i'm going to slightly brighten some of this area uh, so i'm going to come over here and just mask this area including some of that foreground and maybe something like that and all i want to do is slightly brighten that so it's going to be pretty small but maybe just a little bit something like that 
And I think I want to take some of the saturation out of that. It's a little too neon green. I might even try to warm them up a little bit. Maybe something like that. I'm kind of making some of this up as I go. Uh, and that's, uh, that's just a real insight into my editing. I, uh, I have all my plans, my best laid plans, and then I get in here and start editing and I change my mind. But if you look at develop before and after, slightly brighter, uh, slightly warmer, but I think that works in terms of the uh, sunset. I mean, we got some warm light hitting it, so I think it kind of makes sense. And then a couple of more adjustments and I'm done, and that is atmosphere AI. I'm gonna go with layered fog, and I do about a 30 or so here. Actually, I think I'm gonna go higher. I think I'm gonna go to about 50. I'm gonna move the depth up a little bit. If you look at that, you can kind of see what's happening. If I go really high, you can see it spread all across there but I'm gonna do something, maybe a depth of 40, adjustment amount of 50, and that layered fog, it kinda of sits there really aligned pretty well with where all the mist is coming off of the waterfall because I gotta admit, there's a lot of water coming down and it's hitting it with such force that we were getting sprayed, we were wet, and uh, not to mention, it's really loud. So if you look at the before and the after, and that kinda of fades off into the distance, which I think kinda of works. So I kinda of like that quite a bit. And then a vignette is really the last thing. And this is just gonna be kinda of simple, straightforward stuff, a little bit of inner light, choose subject. I might uh, choose slightly over here, something about like that. And um, I think that looks good. So before and after, and I do like a bit of feathering on my vignette. Uh, and I actually kind of like roundness on my uh, vignettes as well. But before and after. So that's the whole thing, start to finish. Now, that's what I started with as a three exposure blended HDR, just using the standard tone mapping in HDR Merge. But, and as you can see, I mean, this looks like a tone mapped image. You got a lot of visibility that you can see in all the shadow areas, but I've adjusted the light. Of course, I've impacted the color, but a lot of targeted adjustments and a lot of global adjustments to really shape the light and get the photo looking the way I want and feel like I need the photo to look to kind of convey the mood here. And like I said, that's one of the things I like about HDR is that you can really enhance mood and drama quite a bit. And while you get a really nice, evenly distributed uh, base image, you can come in and customize it with various global and local edits, like with develop, super contrast, all those kind of things to really make the photo stand out. And to me, it looks like a well-exposed image. It doesn't look like an over-the-top HDR. Perhaps your definition is a bit different, but if you look at the before and the after, we've come a long way, and that's the power of using HDR, and one of the reasons I like it so much is that I feel like I get beautiful results that I'm honestly satisfied with all the time. Uh, so, well, like I said, all the cool kids may have moved on, and, and maybe they don't do HDR that much anymore, but the truth is, and I made a video about this a while back, lots of people still do HDR, they just don't talk about it. So, anyway, that's a workflow process of mine for uh, this HDR, it does vary a little bit, but that's the same idea, global, local, global, generally speaking, focused on light, detail, and color. That's my approach. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.